Hey, do you guys remember Aaron Rodgers? And I don't mean the guy from like the Pat McAfee drama on the show. And I'm also not talking about the guy that your friend thinks is a conspiracy theorist who's like actually right all the time. I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback. And if you have forgotten him, cause it's been a minute, let's watch some tape and I'll fix that real quick. Now, I could have pulled from a long list of highlights. This guy's been doing it at a high level for a long time. And I've said this, maybe this is a bold statement to you, but I've said this forever, that when you're comparing the best quarterbacks ever, we look at Super Bowls, we look at all these things, right? Tom Brady, yes. Patrick Mahomes is on a trajectory. But when I take everyone's best, all the best guys, best, game like the highest level who do i think has the highest level when they're all playing at their highest level i take aaron but here's why it's not just the highlights again i pull from a bunch of these things i'm going to show you kind of three different elements to his game and the first one is this this is a quick out to the left and you're going to be like you picked that play dude i'm just telling you this guy has such a good feel for space he has such incredible spatial awareness and then his ability on rhythm, it seems like he's always on rhythm. He never really gets caught off guard. To put his foot in the ground and absolutely put it on a line. And this is it, this is a wide depart out to Lazard. And this ball's coming out right now, right? So his hands come apart right here. So here's the picture he sees, right? So which means we're really just throwing this to a spot. Throwing it to that spot right there. And just his ability to get this foot in the ground, change direction and rip this thing. And the ball's just always right there. I got a challenge for you. Go online and find me a clip of Aaron Rodgers throwing a bubble screen or a check down or a tunnel screen and the ball's not thrown perfectly. It's not just the incredible wow throws down the field. It's not the 330 yard drew around the tree and landed in position A on the course. A lot of times it's just on the fringe, always chipping it so it's a gimme putt. It's the gimme's over and over and over again that he takes. And this is an example of that, not a sexy highlight play, just a well-thrown ball, timing and accuracy. And again, his rhythm, he sees and feels space as good as anybody and then has the release to get rid of it really quick. Second one. Now, I'm gonna draw this play up here for you, okay? This is in every single playbook. We've got a fade outside, which remember I said this, is typically not alive on this play. You've got a sail route, then you've got a dig coming backside, and then there's a flat element right here. And then depending on what this is, typically you'll have some sort of check down. I don't think he gets out on this one. And Aaron knows right away, this looks like two man, but this is the guy that gives it away. If this is two man, that guy has to be inside leverage if these guys are going to help out. If he's outside leverage and you still believe that it's man, that guy's giving it away that they're gonna rotate to cover one and that's exactly what the safeties do. He rocks down, he rocks back, and Aaron knows right now, this is my only shot, otherwise I'm throwing a dig backside and I've got this guy robbing. So Aaron goes, well, I don't have any other options here. So he kind of floats back, quick five, again, on rhythm, and puts this ball right between these two defenders. Look at this ball placement. If you were to throw that ball there, that's the only place to put it if it's complete, and it's 10, 20, 30, 40 yards down the field, absolute seed into tight coverage. Third, it's just getting rid of it, and it's kind of back to the first one, spatial awareness, understanding coverage, moving somebody early with my eyes, and then throwing it right on time out of their break. It's why he's been able to have so much sustained success for so long in Green Bay, despite never having that first round pick receiver. I know Devonte became, Jordy became, some of these guys became great players, but they never really used a first round pick. They never went out and got a big time free agent. They just kind of home grew their own guys because he gets guys to play on time. And here's Aaron, one, two, three balls out. And again, this concept right here, we're just gonna switch release. I'm sending him in the flat. He's gonna get up here and break in. And then we're gonna just spot right in that hole. I might draw on the piece of paper where I want him to go, but it's on the quarterback and the receiver to be on the same page. And again, just look at the accuracy here. That ball placement, I know he's wide open, right? I don't care. That's equidistant between the two closest defenders, him and his boy is on the same page, and getting him an opportunity to catch it, split, and get north for a first down. Let's go back and look at some of his stats that make him, in my opinion, better than other people's best, especially for a long period of time too. So he's led the league in passer grade three times, led the league in yards once, led the league in touchdowns twice. He's fifth all time in touchdowns, 421, behind Brady, Breeze, Manning, and Favre. He's eighth all time in completions and ninth all time in yards at just under 60,000. His accolades, 
10 Pro Bowls, four MVPs, one Super Bowl, and a Super Bowl MVP. In 2020, that was statistically speaking his best year, just shy of 5,000 yards, 70.2 completion percentage, 53 touchdowns, and the number that you'll never ever see get in the double digits, six interceptions, 121.5 rating on that thing. He was first in TDs that year, first in overall passing grade, first in passing yards, first in completion percentage, third in big time throws, fourth in yards, fourth in yards per average. So that wasn't that long ago. That was basically three years ago. So you say, well, he's 39 years old. Yeah, but he was 36 when he did that. And honestly, coming off of this Achilles with this whole year being able to quiet down, I think he's setting himself up for a little run here with the Jets. Obviously, if he can stay healthy, but you say that about anybody. The anticipation of his comeback this coming season will be really similar to last year. Monday night, home opener versus the Bills. Everybody's watching. I think that'll just end up being the exact same thing. I don't think any of the hype dies down, but the expectation, the hunger, the drive, I think has grown since he's really had his first season where he missed the entire thing due to an injury. Look, I got a long list of stats, all these different things from different years. Deep balls, intermediate, short. The reality is this, it's gonna be redundant. When this guy plays, he plays at a high level and the level that he plays at is as high as anybody's, which is why if you've forgotten about Aaron Rodgers, the player, you need to watch some tape.